I'll make you understand what a standard deviation is in less than 10 minutes. I want to first briefly mention normal distribution. Normal distribution is this kind of looking graph that is symmetric. And what about this distribution? Believe it or not, this distribution describes a lot of things in nature in terms of randomness. And nature loves symmetry. Normal distribution is also known as Gaussian distribution. Why? Because this crazily smart man 200 years ago, Carl Gauss, came up with a mathematical expression which can describe all kinds of normal distribution. And here's our standard deviation, denoted as sigma, which is a Greek alphabet. You don't need to know this full expression, but just this sigma. So what is standard deviation, and what does it do? It tells how much the distribution, I mean the data, is spread. If the standard deviation is low, then the data isn't spread as much. If the standard deviation is high, then the data is very much spread. That's what standard deviation tells us about the distribution. So how do you obtain these numbers that tell the spreadness of the data? We obtain standard deviation value using this expression. As I said, this sigma is the standard deviation. And that is another Greek alphabet, mu, which represents the average value of the data. We'll get back to this expression later. There's one crazy thing about standard deviation. Say we have some unknown data that is normally distributed. Say we have 500 data collected on this graph. This is just an example. The average value will of course be at the center, right? Now, if you expand to the left and right by one standard deviation, you'll notice that you just enclosed 68% of your data in this region. We have 500 data in total, so that's probably about 340 data stacked in this region. If you expand further by two standard deviations, you'll notice that you have 95% of your data in this region. And 95% is about 475 data. And if you go even further by three standard deviations, you'll now have 99.7% of your data. So what am I talking about? What I'm trying to say is that this is true in all kinds of normal distribution. The 68%, 95%, 99.7% 90, is always these ratios. You may be thinking, is that even possible? How can this be true in all cases? You don't believe me? Let's see this phenomenon by ourselves. I brought a distribution here. Because realities aren't perfect, we see here some exceptional events here, but it's more or less symmetric in overall. By the way, this data represents the number of people with these weight. I counted the boxes and made a chart like this, so the population of each weight. We're now going to compute the standard deviation of this distribution using this expression. We first need the capital N in the denominator, which is the amount of data. We have 81 people's information here, and mu, as I said, is the average value. You probably know how to obtain it. Now, what I'm going to do is, we need to compute this inner bracket first. x sub i is the x value, in this case, each weight. And we just need to subtract the average value from the x values of the data. For example, 60 minus 68.16, that's minus 8.16, right? Then we have square here, so we need to square the terms. Now we have a sigma here, so we should add all the numbers. But of course, each bean has a different amount, I mean different populations. So we'll have to multiply by number of people, then add them all, which gives about 988.946. You can check if you get the same answer. Lastly, we gotta divide by the total amount 
then square root it. I got this standard deviation of 3.49 kilograms. Standard deviation is about the x value, so that's why it's in kilogram. So now what? I'm going to show you how this has to do with the 68%, 95%, and 99.7% that I mentioned before. So our mean value was 68.16 kilograms and our standard deviation was 3.49 kilograms. I'm going to now indicate where the mean value is. So it should be around here, 68.16. Now, let's expand it by one standard deviation, which was 3.49 kilograms. The left side should be about 64.67 kilograms, and the right side should be about 71.65 kilograms. If I expand one standard deviation further, the left wall should be 61.18 kilograms, and the right wall should be 75.14 kilograms. Let's count how many boxes are in this plus minus one standard deviation region. I know these left boxes are sticking out a little bit, but let's just roughly say that they're in the region since most parts are inside. It seems there are 54 people collected within this region. You can just count these boxes. And how much portion is that? 54 out of 81 people? That's about 67%. That is very close to 68%. Again, realities aren't perfect. Now let's now add the second region. This is 77 people, I counted. Which is 95% of 81 people. Isn't this crazy? But again, this works only when the data was naturally and randomly collected. And when things in nature are collected randomly, it should have some symmetry like this. So that's standard deviation. If you think I've saved so much over time, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And for those who still got some time to watch, here's one bonus fact. Why is standard deviation mathematically defined this way? Why does this represent spreadness of the data? I'll bring the chart again. At one point, we were at this row. And think about this x sub i minus mu. If you think about it, this should give how far each weight value is from the average we obtained. And this literally means by how much the values are deviated from the average value. But wait, doesn't that mean if we obtain the average of these deviations, it should say about the spreadness of the data, like this. If you just average it from here without squaring it, you'll simply get zero. You won't be able to tell the spreadness of the data. But this makes sense, because the mean value is the center value of the data, right? So if we collect all the differences from the average value, we should of course get zero. But now, if you square each individual difference, then average them, you won't lose the information on spreadness. That's because by squaring it, we're getting rid of these minus signs. These minus ones were the ones that were canceling the other half of the data, and that's why we are getting zero. Anyway, of course you'll have to square root it back since we intentionally squared them before. And this is how standard deviation was defined. Thank you for watching this video and I'll hope to see you next time. By the way, this is my cat Urmi.